Hi students, I wanted to show you how to do um, the first lab for this class. We're going to be um, verifying the truth table for um, an inverter. So the inverter that we have in our lab kits, um, it comes in a dual inline package and there are, <clears throat> this is the pinout diagram for our chip. So if you want to locate your chip in your lab kit, um, <clears throat> This is the name of the inverter chip that we're gonna be using. We have a different manufacturer. So on your guys' chips, you wanna locate the one that says, um, the numbers are, here's the code, SN74LSO4N. Okay, um, so if you can look at the little numbers that are printed on the top of your um, I see that's in your lab kit um, and find this one. This is going to be the inverter. So I wanted to show you how to put this onto the breadboard. Um, so here I have the data sheet. This is like the spec sheet. This is just the top page that shows um, the pinout diagram. So um, the way we're going to kind of orient this is if you find on your chip, there's what looks like um, a little um, dip right here. So that's gonna basically indicate the top. Ours also has, um, sometimes you'll see a little dot like that. And then we're gonna have, um, looks like ours has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins on both the top and the bottom. Okay, so um, we have a 14 um, DIP dual inline package for, with 14 pins. And this dot right here is gonna indicate pin one. So you know that that's kinda like the top. And there's this little divot here too. So if you can orient your chip just like this, then you can um, <clears throat> kinda lay it here by the pin out diagram and you can just kinda match up the pins. So my pin one, that's the input to the first inverter. Pin two is the output of the first inverter. And we have six inverters in here that we get to use for our um, circuits. So the other thing to note is pin seven, this one that's down here, is ground. So this is when we are powering up our chip to basically turn it on so we can use it. We're going to connect this ground pin to the negative side of our power source. The other thing here is this pin 14, so the, the numbering of the pins goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back around and back up from eight to 14 on the other side. So um, it goes in this way in a loop, and up here, the last one, this pin 14, this is VCC, this is where we attach our positive power source. And that's not an input signal that's gonna get inverted, um, these are actually our supply voltages, okay? So this is where we connect this to power to turn the chip on so that we can use it. And then the input signal that we actually want to invert is going to go in on one of these inverter inputs. And um, you can see the orientation of the inverter. It comes in, and then where you see that little bubble, that's where it comes out, okay? So it comes into the triangle, comes out where the bubble is, and then we're gonna read our output on one of these output pins. So um, for us, we're gonna use this inverter, and um, I'll show you how to connect VCC and ground to turn on the chip, and then we're going to apply um, just a positive DC voltage to pin one, and then we're going to check and see on pin two that that's inverted. So we would expect that, and here's the truth table, we expect that um, for our input, if we apply a low signal, right, so basically zero volts or nothing, then that should produce a high signal on the output. If we apply a high, that should produce a low. Okay, so that's gonna be our inverter functionality. So um, here's my breadboard. I'm just gonna stick this right in the middle. It's gonna straddle this middle bar here. And um, you have to be a little bit careful because these pins are delicate. They can bend and they can break fairly easy. So you wanna um, push this in all the way. So the way the breadboards work is there's a metal strip behind here. Um, and in order to make a good connection with the metal strip, make sure all of your components are pressed down all the way into the breadboard. Okay, um, so the next thing we're gonna be using for the first time is in your lab kits, we have these power supplies. Um, so these are from the physics department, 
and let me see if I can adjust this so you can see. Um, we can adjust this between 3 and 12 volts. So um, I tried this out. These um, chips are low enough current that we can go ahead and use 3 volts and it'll still work. Um, optimally, we'll usually apply 5 volts as our high signal. Um, so 4.5 volts would work too. 6 is getting a little bit high and we're going to stay away from these higher voltages just because we don't need it and we don't want to risk burning anything out. Um, we're going to be using an LED um, and so that's also pretty low current and it's fairly easy to pop those, especially if you um, don't connect them correctly. Okay, so um, just to give you a tip, these things, um, a lot of times we use these with sockets that plug directly into here, but we have our jumper wires, so I'll give you a trick what we can do is you can unscrew these and then you can put in a jumper wire and it's a good idea just to kind of get in the habit of um, connected to the black or the negative side, this is our grand side, go ahead and use a black wire so that when it's on your breadboard you'll remember that this is going to the negative side of your source. And then to make a good connection, um, what we want to do is we want to stick this in here and then we're going to screw this down so that it pins the metal to the metal. And that's going to make a nice good solid connection. And we don't want to touch the wire encasing part, we just want the metal exposed to the metal here. And then we'll do the same thing for the positive side, and we don't want these positive and negative sides to be touching each other at all. So I'll put it on this side, and I'm going to unscrew this, and I'm going to screw it down so that the metal makes a good contact, and that's not going to move at all. Nice, good, solid connection. So my wires are coming out like this. You can It's hard to see the black one, but it's like that. Okay, um, so then that's going to be my power supply. A lot of times what people like to do with these breadboards is, um, let me straighten this out for you a little bit, is they like to go ahead and put these along the, um, these horizontal lines here. Okay, so sometimes I call this a power bus. And um, the way it works is Along this blue line, all of these sockets are going to be connected. So this makes just one big long line. So if I plug in the negative side of my source to the, the minus and the positive side of my source to the plus, like this, then that means that all along here, anytime I need um, a positive to route a, a access to the positive side of my source, I just grab a jumper wire and I connect it from here to somewhere along the main body of my breadboard. Um, so these, if these, all these sockets are connected to each other along the red line, and all these sockets are connected to each other along the blue line, but obviously they're not connected to each other vertically like this. But what is connected vertically are these lines. Okay, so um, this, this socket here is has connectivity with every socket along this vertical line. So um, anywhere along here is going to be connected. So if we straddle our chip like this, that means that if I want to connect something to this pin right here, I can put a socket anywhere along this line. Um, this kind of middle area here that's white, um, there's no connectivity between the bottom half and the top half of the breadboard, okay? So um, if you remember, let's pull up our pinout diagram here. We want to connect pin 7 to ground. So let's do that first. Um, I'm going to grab a jumper wire and I'm going to plug it in along the line that lines up with pin 7. And then this, the other end of this, I'm going to put somewhere along the blue line down here that's connected to the negative side of my source. So now I have my chip grounded. Um, the other way that I need to turn it on is I need to connect it to VCC at pin 14. But VCC at pin 14, I'm going to connect to the positive side of my source, which I have running along the red line. So I will plug this in here and then this goes anywhere along here it doesn't matter if it goes here or here because everywhere along here the the red line is connected okay great so now I have VCC and ground connected if I turn my power supply on 
um, my chip will be functional um, and it's ready to do some inverting. So the way we're going to do the inverting um, is we could we could put in our input here at pin one, right? We're going to use the first inverter, this inverter right here. So my input I'm putting in to pin one is going to go to this first inverter. And then um, what's kind of nice, I don't have a switch, but that's okay. My poor man's switch is I'm just going to take the other side of this jumper wire. And then when I want to apply a high signal, I'm just going to dip it in, just dip it into the um, red side of my power bus. Right, so that's going to apply a high signal. I unplug it and that applies no signal, so a low signal. So um, in order for us to test if we're actually um, verifying that this is inverting, we're going to have to do a couple things. We want to um, put in a wire connected to our output pin. Okay, so pin two. So along the line, that lines up with pin two, I have this gray jumper wire. And um, I could do a couple things here. I could either connect this to a multimeter and I could read the voltage. Um, if I want a little shortcut and you just wanna make a, a visual, um, make sure that it's working visually and not have to do any measurements, I'm gonna connect this to an LED. So the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna pull this out kinda of out of the way here because it doesn't need to be close to the rest of my chip at all. So let me just put this here um, along a new line. And then I'm gonna grab one of the LEDs in the lab kits. And um, these LEDs are biased. That means that there's a positive and a negative side. And the way that you can tell is one of them kind of has a longer leg than the other. Okay, so let me lay this down so you can see. Um, of our connectors here, one of them is shorter and one of them is longer. The longer one indicates the positive side. So you always want to orient that in the direction towards the positive side of your source. Our positive side of our source comes from here along the red wire. It goes into the, um, it's gonna come into pin one, it's gonna come out of pin two, and then from pin two, I want to face my LED um, towards this gray wire. So what I like to do is I like to bend this a little bit so that I make kind of like a, a bended knee on my LED. And that way um, the level of these two wires is equal. So when I stick it into the breadboard, um, this is gonna make a good solid connection and then my LED kind of sits upright. So I'm gonna bend this to this side so you can see. I have the longer connector to my LED in line with my gray wire. My gray wire, remember, is attached to the output pin of my inverter in the chip. And then, so the current is gonna come through this gray wire, through the LED, out of the LED, and I need to complete the circuit. So that means that from the negative side of my LED, I need to put one last jumper wire that goes to the negative side of my source so that I complete um, my circuit. So we grab one more jumper wire, goes anywhere along the line of the negative side of the LED, the shorter end, and then this other side I'm going to plug somewhere along the blue line of my breadboard. Okay, so now I have everything set up and um, I want to verify this truth table. So my truth table is just, it's a, a simple one, I'm just going to invert. So if I apply a low signal, I would expect a high signal on the output. So if I put in no input to pin one, I expect this LED to be high. So it's gonna turn on. If I plug this into the red line of my breadboard, then now it has connection with um, my VCC power source. So that means that I would have a high input to pin one. So pin two, I would expect to be low. So I'd expect the LED to go out. So let's test it and make sure that's gonna work. Um, this isn't gonna do anything until I turn it on. So let me turn on my power supply here. And um, you'll notice that the LED goes on. I have this set to three volts because I'm applying a zero volt input. So basically no input, a low input to pin one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pin one connector and I'm just gonna dip it right in anywhere along the red line of my power bus. And as soon as I do that, as soon as it makes connection with the metal, boop, 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 see this? 
As soon as it makes connection to the metal, the LED goes off, okay? So here I'm applying a high input and I'm getting a low output. And this is how we would kind of visually um, verify the truth table for the inverter. So um, for the lab, I'm gonna ask you guys to basically do the same thing, but for the AND and the OR gates. And <clears throat> the ANDs and the ORs are a little bit different and I can show you how those work too, because instead of having one input pin, our chips have two input pins and one output pin. Okay, so you gotta think about how you're going to connect your inputs in order to scroll through all the um, all the combinations of inputs you can have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and get the corresponding output. So um, let me know if you have any questions about how to set up your um, inverter chip on a breadboard and verify it with an LED, and um, I'll be here to help.